There we go. All right. Um, it's a significant celestial event, and, and I felt very strongly that we really needed to teach on it and um, get some significant information out about it. So for those of you who are new, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for putting up with the craziness that's been happening um, on this. I do apologize. Um, for my folks that have been here before and that and my subscribers, thank you again for coming back. Um, as always, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing. Uh, we are going for a subscriber goal here of 2,000 subscribers. I'm like 90 away, guys. So we're going to do something very special when we hit 2,000. Um, so please consider sharing it. And every comment that you leave down at the bottom, if you're a subscriber, uh, gets you entered into a drawing. And this month it'll be for three Reiki, uh, three, your choice, three subscribers will win your choice of either an energy healing session or an intuitive reading session. So I wanted to get that out of the way. Um, I am feeling a tad bit better. Yes. <coughs> a tad. We're going to do what we can. Okay. I'm going to get into this. Um, and I appreciate your patience. The full moon uh, of, for June of 2019 occurs on the 17th, so very soon. Um, it is in Sagittarius. It occurs, it starts, right, the height of it, right, at 4.31 a.m. <coughs> That's when it, if the moon becomes officially full. 4.31 a.m. Eastern on the 17th. 1.31 a.m. Pacific on the 17th. I'm going to talk of June. So I want to talk about a couple of things. I want to talk about the day before and the day after the height of the full moon. And then we'll get into the full moon. The day before Jupiter is fully square is square Neptune on June the 16th. Why is this so important? I'm going to talk about what Jupiter represents. I'm going to talk about what Neptune represents. And then let's talk about them being square, what that can mean for us. During Gemini season especially. So Jupiter, what does Jupiter represent? Jupiter represents big ideas, expansion, risk-taking, like doing brand new things, right? That's what Jupiter represents. Sagittarian energy. Also, if we look at the Roman god Jupiter, he was... Um, the equivalent to the Greek god of Zeus. He is the king of the gods. So as the king, this ruler, um, this ruler, all of this, as the king, the king comes up with great, big, grand ideas, right? The king says, this is what we're going to do. The king comes up with the plan. The king comes and says, this is these are the, the this is the way that the kingdom is going to go. This is the direction the kingdom is going to go. That's what this king that's what the king does. So that's what Jupiter Sagittarian energy that's what it does as well. Neptune is the planet of Pisces, right? And its god, its Roman god was Poseidon. Neptune rules spirituality. It rules, rules the flow of universal energy because it's about deep spirituality. It's not about surfacey spirituality. It's not about just riding a wave. It's about the things of the deep and deep mysteries and deep knowledge. It's about dreams, psychic receptivity. Neptune can also cause illusion and a bit of confusion. So these two being squared one another, what does that mean? Also re remember that Jupiter is in retrograde in Sagittarius as well. Hello, lovely Libra. Jupiter is retrograde in Sag right now as well. And it will be for another couple of months. This day, the day before this full moon, that represents the possibility for us to be doubting our innermost decisions, our innermost thought processes, doubting whether or not we were correct in deciding to do this great big idea. 
whether or not we were correct in deciding whether or not whether to do this great big idea. Now, you might remember the new moon was all about saying, hey, when are you finally going to kick your butt into gear? Right? When are you, um, oh, Heather, tell them I said hello. Tell the boys I said hello. Hello, Alex. Hello, Huggy. Um, the new moon was all about, you've got these big ideas. You haven't done a darn thing with it. Um, when are you going to get going? And so now we've been toiling away and working, working, working. And we've been working on these ideas, right? And we're saying, oh, yeah, this is great. This is awesome. This is great. This is beautiful. And now here we come to June 16th. And Jupiter is square Neptune. And now it's, uh-oh, did I make all the right decisions? Uh-oh, was this right to do this? Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. So on a June 16th, that is not a day for you to decide to bail on all of your big ideas. Instead, take that energy, remain in faith, and say, all right, can we just do one more double check to make sure, yeah? To make sure that I am hearing from my highest self from my highest level i am hearing about this great big idea or change in ideas or whatnot i'm hearing about this right i'm and and, and I'm, I'm just i've heard it and i've realigned myself and decided all this rest of this month i was going to do something a little bit different because i knew earlier in the month with the new moon and starting the new cycle that things had to be different um, I couldn't just do things status quo the same way I'd always planned. This forced me to look at it again. And if it was the right thing to do, then go forward. But if it was not, then realign myself. But take this energy and say, I want to be sure I'm hearing. Have faith in your in your ability to hear and ability to know. And just kind of do a double check. But don't make any major decisions on June 16th. That's my advice. Write it out. The day after the new moon, so June 18th, Saturn then becomes sextile to Neptune. In agreement. So now we have Capricornian energy agreeing with Piscean energy. How wonderful. That's beautiful because they're natural sextiles anyway. So Saturn is actually, hey Rio, Saturn is actually the god of agriculture, the founder of civilizations. This is the Roman god, excuse me. The god of agriculture, the founder of civilizations and social order and conformity. And if you think about that fact, and you think about Capricorn as an Earth sign and Saturn as its ruling planet, doesn't it make a whole lot of sense now? Doesn't that make sense? Capricornians are really about planting and nurturing and that seed, like they are willing to watch that seed grow from start to finish, man. They will plant that son of a gun and they We'll make sure that it is weeded, the garden is tilled, everything is working as it's supposed to. You know, they keep all the the birds out and the vermin and everything. You know, they put the fences around and everything. And everything is always a, is about order, social order. Saturn was the founder of civilization, so government. So it's about structure. But but the structure of a Capricorn is also allows for growth. I want you to put those two concepts together because the structure is not so tight that it can bind. It can be if you're not careful, but the structure in, in its essence and its purity is not so tight that it can bind and, 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 and stop 
growth, but instead it is a structure through which the seed can be planted and then the stalk, if you will, supported on either on every side. Weeds taken away from it, anything that could kill it. And then it's allowed to grow and sprout. So this, when it's sextile Neptune, this is a beautiful time then to get the depth of information from up and beyond and above. Get the depth of the spiritual information in a download and, and have return to the faith in the foundation that you've already been working on building. You should have been all this month. And if you haven't, it's not too late. But, 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 but return to the faith in the foundation that's been laid out before you. Hello, Don. Be and 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 let the insp inspiration come to fulfill your plans. Remember, two days prior on the sixteenth, you were doubting a little bit, and we're about to get to the seventeenth. But on the eighteenth, now we are re-inspired. Well, we're not worried about exes tonight. We're worried about ourselves. We're re-inspired to put into motion at, uh, all of those life purpose goals, those big, great, big ideas that we've been called to do. So all this month, we're supposed to have been working on that. It's still not too late. And it's still not too late to change up your plans if that's what needs to be done. Hello, Jillian. Your plans might need to be changed a little bit and altered, but just have faith that you're being spirit led in how you do them. Optimistic while acknowledging your limitations. That's the other thing that I read as well. I wrote down optimistic while acknowledging your limitations. There may be some physical limitations on this earth right now, but yet you remain optimistic that those limitations won't last forever. They're not forever. They're not permanent. We're going to take that, in, that, that, that energy and we're going to utilize it properly so that we can bring forward a manifestation of that which we desire. That's what we're going to do with that faith. Now let's talk about the full moon. Let's talk about the full moon itself. The full moon itself is conjunct to Jupiter. Not complete opposition, but conjunct. So it's kind of like we got kind of two different ideas on how to accomplish. <coughs> so it's conjunct Jupiter in retrograde in Sagittarius. That in and of itself actually can help us by bringing in an optimism. The moon is my planet, a Cancerian planet. Hey, Sassy. The moon is a Cancer, is the, the ruler of Cancer, correct? And so Cancerians, we tend to be rather optimistic in nature. So this is actually good because we're going to bring a good, healthy optimism, some good generosity in working with the Sagittarian, um, energy we're going to bring an intuition to it because the moon is an intuitive right it's it rules a water sign we're going to bring an intuition to these grandiose ideas on how to actually implement them and we're going to bring support to it because the moon we can't see her, it's all about support and mothering oh honey you're going to make it right you're going to do it so we're going to bring this good thing to it good intentions breed success so in actuality my by Jupiter being in retrograde right now, it is really for us to focus in on ourselves. Hello, TJ. It is really meant for us to focus in inward. And I just did the Capricorn reading and it was beautiful because it was like, are you going to choose to be the leading man or leading woman in your story that you always known you should be? 
So this is going to bring good energy to this um, in Jupiter. It's And it's going to breathe this success. Very supportive, very loving, very kind. And over now. Now, also other planetary uh, aspects that are going to affect because a full moon does not happen in a vacuum. Understand when the moon is full, that means it is also in opposition to the sun. So that the sun being in Gemini and in the, that would be by that point, the third decan of Gemini, I would say this, please watch what you say. Please watch what you say. Uh, because this is going to take on, the Gemini energy is going to take on quite the Aquarian nature. So you might find yourself in communication and, and, and Mercury is conjunct with Mars, meaning kind of have a little bit of aggressive conversation going. It can be. So just be aware of this. This is on June 17th, you guys. Pay attention on June 17th. Okay, pay attention to how, and for the next couple of days after, pay attention to how you speak to people and how you're hearing things, right? The moon conjunct Mars creates a focus on making your dreams come true. <clears throat> However, it brings a sense of urgency that can lead to argument. <clears throat> now, The moon conjunct Mars on June 17th. And it will be that way for about that day because Mercury moves pretty fast, as does Mars. Maybe a little bit longer than it will be conjunct Mars for about a day or two. Brings an acute focus to making your dreams come true. So basically, you're going to take this energy and uh, with all of this, like, dreamy, 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 right? Remember, the day before now, with Jupiter square Neptune, we've been doubting. And there's the time to really have faith. Now, on June 17th, now it's like, okay, look, the, Mercury is the is the main player here because it's the ruling planet of Gemini. So it's the main player and it's the main player of communication. We have to remember that communication is not just between us here on this earth, but communication is this way as well, right? And it also is inward as well. We communicate with ourselves every day. Our higher self communicates with our mind and then, then therefore with our body and tells us what to do. Sometimes our mind rules everything, which it shouldn't. It's out of order. Whatever our mind says is going to go is going to manifest. So our thought life is very important, especially during this month. This month, hello Mary, this month is such a huge month as well. It's, you know, it's springtime, right? We're coming into summer solstice soon. And it's the tail end of springtime. This is the tail end of the planting season. And uh, and then summer, we begin to see the growth. And then fall, we see the harvest. So June is such a very critical month for all of us to truly have our seeds planted and ready to go. And our seeds are our thoughts. Those are our seeds, guys. Our thoughts are our seeds. Whatever your mind conceives of comes into physical being. So what seeds are you putting up here that your mouth then can plant? Into your heart, which is the fertile ground. Mm. So there's going to be an acute focus on the fact, basically this is what I'm saying, is that on the 17th is the day that if you are going to emphatically with passion say this dream of mine will come true it will come to pass it will happen june 17th is a great day to, to be throwing out mantras june 17th is a fantastic day to plant those seeds into that fertile ground as long as your heart is ready to receive the seed and then water and send out the emotion, right? Send out the frequency for manifestation. <clears throat> 
focus in on that. What thoughts are you saying and what thoughts are you thinking than what's coming out of your mouth? Now, it is also rather urgent and aggressive energy. It could lead to arguments as well. So please try not to be reckless by the mouth. Okay. On the 17th, this is still full moon now. Mercury is opposing Saturn. This can cause frustration, negativity. You're rushing around, so you make a lot of mistakes because Mercury's fast, moving fast, thinking fast, talking. Hey, Turner, right? I mean, do we have any Geminis in the house? Geminis are fast thinkers, fast talkers, fast movers. They are fast deciders. Um, frustration, negativity, and mistakes. So I wrote in here, take your time. You remember I said June 16th, don't make no crazy decisions, right? Don't make any decisions, no big changes that, that day. On June 17th, take your time as you're doing your work or as you're doing your foundation or whatever it is you're doing, take your time so you, you might be more prone to make mistakes. Try not to be defensive on that day because see, this is what's happening. You have a structure, you have a way of that you're thinking things are going to go <clears throat> or they should go. Remember that by this point, we are in the third decade of Gemini, which means we're acting like Aquarians. Yes. We're acting like Aquarians. Geminis. The energy is more Aquarian-like than strictly Gemini, Gemini-like. Therefore, you know, Aquarians can cut to the chase. They can cut you quick. And they want things to be very fair. They want things to be very fair. Now, so you could get easily upset about something because it could... The mer Mercury is opposing Saturn, so someone may be just kind of illuminating a problem, a chink in the armor, or just making a suggestion of how you maybe will, you may could do something a little differently, and you could get a little upset because it doesn't conform to how you're thinking. And your Aquarian would be like, you know what, that Aquarian type energy would be like, I ain't trying to hear you, you know, step off, okay? So try not to be on the defensive. And I also wrote down on the notes, stay the course nose to the grindstone in other words if anybody got something to say about i don't think that this is the way that you should go you know and they don't they haven't been with you through the whole everything right they ain't been with you through the struggle then don't pay them any mind just keep your eye on the prize and keep your nose to the grindstone. Why? What is going on? I'm sorry, Sassy, for your loss. So, Mercury opposite Saturn. Keep your nose to the grindstone. Mercury is also going, now there's some help here. Mercury trining Neptune and Mars is trining Neptune. This is actually very good because we have both Mercury and Mars trining Neptune at this point. So now we also have the communication and the action planets. <coughs> and they are trining the planet of deep spiritual universal energy and knowledge. Deep spiritual knowledge, abilities, spiritual manifestation, gifts, um, psychic abilities and receptivities. Um, this is this can be a great time where the harmony and the sensitivity to the things of the spirit are on such 
a heightened level. Marry all signs. All signs. This is for all signs. This is not for Gemini's only. A great empathy to overcome the Saturn negativity and aggression. So this is the thing. You have at the full moon, the other aspect I did not speak on is the full moon is going to be in alignment with a position on the on the astrological chart that a lot of people say is the center of the universe. It's the point where it's literally the source of all. The alignment to the position of source while in conjunction with Saturn in the later portion or third decan of Saturn. This alignment, along with the others, Mercury trining Neptune, Mars trining Neptune, we have Saturn in the mix, is, has created an opening, a portal opening, that if you are tuned into it, the level and depth and detail and power of the of spiritual abilities capabilities and knowledge can be such that what you can set into motion during this full moon will be life altering and life purpose fulfilling Are you hearing me? The moon is going to be in line with the point on the chart that is considered the center of the universe. The center of the universe. How beautiful is that? The creative energy that exists at the center of the universe is tangible. The alignment of the moon to that with Mercury training Neptune, so the <coughs> the ability to gain an impartation from spirit, a direction, a thought, a transformational life-changing thought a transformational life-changing thought or series of thoughts and then have the Mars energy in there saying okay now you got your marching orders now you under now you you know now that you have these capabilities and abilities and Mars then comes in and says now what are we gonna do with it let's get to going let's get to using it and you got Jupiter sitting here and Saturn going, y'all, I've been waiting on this for a minute. I've been waiting on this. I have been waiting for the moment in time when the seed would get activated so that our grand plan can be put into motion. We have been 
We have been laying down foundations. We've been thinking about it. We've been dreaming about it. We've been writing it down. We've been talking about it. We've been claiming it, confessing it, proclaiming it, all this stuff, right? We've been doing all these things all this time. I've been telling you this is the year for you to grow and be and get into your place. We've been doing all of this work. And now at this halfway point in 2019, before three consecutive eclipses happen, three consecutive eclipses happen directly after this full moon and then the moon goes void. The energetic portal that is open in the last two weeks of this month is significant. Is significant. It is a veil being opened. It is a I don't know if y'all ever watched Star Trek or anything like that. Y'all ever seen them big old black holes or anything? Or y'all watched, uh, I know y'all, most of y'all seen Avengers and all this, or Doctor Strange, and he opens up those portals. You know, Thanos, Thanos opened up a portal and walked his big behind right through it. Y'all know what I'm talking about? It's a portal opening. It is a literal portal opening if i could somehow give you guys the vision i have in my spiritual eye right now if i could give you that so you could literally see the heavens opening up <clears throat> and this gigantic beam of white light coming down. You would be in awe. June 17th, 2019. One plus seven equals eight. Eight is the number of infinity. Twenty nineteen, add that equals add that up equals twelve. Eight plus six equals fourteen. One plus four equals five. Take all your numbers if you want to. I don't care how you slice it and dice it. I can reduce the whole thing down to five, to nine, to nine, to eight. I can reduce this whole thing down to eight. Infinity. Six plus one plus seven is 14, plus 12, 16, 26, yes. All the numbers together, six plus one plus seven plus two plus zero plus one plus nine can get all reduced down to the number eight. The number eight is infinity, infinity. We are setting in motion we have the time, we have the, the space, the moment in time to grab a hold of infinity. Yes? The number eight signifies motion. It signifies a level of unending motion, work, movement, this is meant to move and motivate us and grant us the abilities we've been looking for to do it.
They've always been inside of us. It's an activation. There's a reason why we're talking about Saturn being the god of agriculture. It was significant to me. These seeds, I see these little seedlings. This is a significant time. Mercury trines Neptune. They're in agreement. They're cousins. They're, they're siblings in this case. They're acting like siblings in this case. Yeah. Mars trining Neptune. They're acting as siblings in this case. Which means all the kids are gathering together and they're communicating well. And then they're acting. They're all supporting one another and they're like, let's go get it. All the while underneath this moon and big idea energy. And you want to sit here and talk about relationships. Uh-uh. Do you, TJ? That's awesome. I will say on a relationship note, relationship issues can happen during this time period. Be compassionate to one another. They can also be very good. So just try to not, this is not a real good time for, for verbal communication between human beings. <coughs> it can be a good time to find a soulmate if both of you guys are open to the right frequency. This is significant because you are going to have, if you are open, the ability to see the bigger picture and not only see it, but convey it and then act on it. This is the time. You got to get your ish together here so that when the eclipse energy comes in, Okay. Am I back, y'all? I don't know what's going on with my software. Hang on, I'm closing a couple things. Okay, am I back? I hope I'm back. Let me go on my phone. Bear with me. Okay. All right, I'm back. All right, good. Sorry. TJ, I might take this down and edit it and then put it back up. Um. Listen. This is a significant moment in history. This is a significant moment in your history. <clears throat> this is a significant portal that is being opened at the very center of the creation of our universe. At the very center of the creation of our matrix. And it's very important that we take it, and I know I'm being more serious, right? I am being very serious. Because this moment in time is not meant to be taken with frivolity. You can either decide to grab a hold of this right now and propel yourself completely forward into so much wonderful abundance there's so much abundance on the other side of this a tremendous amount of abundance on the other side of this download of information and abilities that i do not want to see anyone left out but i will tell you this if you choose to stick your head in the sand and you ain't done your work and you ain't trying to do your work 
and all this stuff, then it's going to pass you by. And instead of being one that knows for sure which way that they should go, if you're still playing around, you could kid me, you can kid your neighbor, you can kid everybody in the chat, you go to everybody else's chats. I know I'm being tough on somebody here tonight, but it is what it is. And somebody watching me later is probably going to be like, damn, that woman is really rough. But I'm going to tell you something. You can kid everybody else. I don't care whose chat room I see you in. You can sit around here and be in, you know, I'm all this and I'm all that. And I'm awakened and I'm whooped the bam womb, all that. You be what you want to be everywhere else, right? But if you ain't done your work on the inside, this all going to pass you by. You're going to sit here confused and confunkled. I don't know which way to go. If you're sitting here playing games and pretending, this ain't a time to lie to yourself. That's the worst person you could lie to. Because when you lie to yourself, you continue to create an illusion that keeps you in confusion. So be honest with yourself if you haven't done it yet. Be honest with yourself and do your work. Be honest with yourself and realize you ain't that great as great as you think you are. Have some humility. All these gifts are not being given to you so that you can walk around with your chest puffed out saying, I know how to read cards or I, I can see into the future, or, you know, I can talk to spirits. That's not what this is meant for. Now, somebody at some point is going to hear this that's supposed to hear it. So if I'm not talking to you, don't you ain't got to try to put the shoe on. If it don't fit, don't try to keep squeezing it at all. It ain't yours. But it's time out. It's time out. Playtime is over. Yes, we can all have a good time. But just as e as quickly as these gifts have been given to you, I will tell you they can be taken away. This these gifts are not here so that you can puff your chest out. These are here. You've been given these gifts so that it will be given more gifts and abilities, capabilities, and marching orders. You signed a contract before you came here. It's time to start fulfilling it. You signed a contract that you would do something when you came here. It's time you started fulfilling it. You're going to get the upgrades that you need. So these aren't given to you so you can have fun time, play time, and impress people. Okay? It's not what it's here for. It's here so you can help raise the vibrational set point of humanity. So that you can help heal humanity. So you can help usher in <coughs> usher in the next age. Because if you're not paying any attention, if you're not paying any attention, shame on you. But there are now fully functional robots, artificial humans. Full, when I say fully functional, of course, they made the women first, you know, nasty cows. But fully functional. Artificial intelligence is real. And I'm not doom and gloom and crazy. You know, I'm not all that conspiracy theory. I'm just telling you, there's a new age of humanity that needs to get ushered in. And we are here to help. We are here to help. We are here to help humanity grow. We are here to help humanity rise to that next level. That's the purpose of our awakening. That's why we have unplugged from the matrix, so to speak. 
This is a significant portal. Can it be overwhelming? Sure. But I'm going to tell you something. Come outside yourself. Come outside yourself. Because it ain't about you. It's about your higher self. It's not about this third dimensional character you decided to put on to play the game this go around. It's not about that character. It's about your higher self and what you said you were going to do when you came here. And it's time to remember and it's time to enact it. The other thing before I forget, the other thing about the significance of where the moon, the full moon is, the center of the universe, and I will get the exact degree and minute that the full moon is in Sagittarius as of the 16th, where it would exactly be. That exact point has historically or anecdotally or whatever, esoterically, whatever you'd like to say, it is significant for Kundalini energy. So if you have been looking to have a kundalini awakening, this is the time. For those of us who have had a kundalini awakening already, and as I'm speaking, I can literally feel the kundalini energy rising up from my root chakra running up through my spine as we speak. If it has never happened to you before, it is time for it to happen. If it has happened to you before, if you've already experienced it, it's time for a renewal. This is a significant portal opening. This is a significant download time. This is a significant growth moment. This is a very significant energetic manifestation, planting. This is a big one. And I want to be here to help you through it. So what we are going to do, and I hope those of you that are watching this before the full moon, what we are going to do here on this channel is we are going to have a full moon meditation time together. I will be making announcements about that on my community page, so please subscribe. Very good. Very good, Rio. Very good. I Yes, I, I saw your Facebook page. I'm very proud of you. Um, we're going to do a full moon <coughs> meditation on that date. I may push it back till about 5.30 in the morning central time. But we will do it very early in the day. There's something to be said for group meditation. Even when group meditation is done this way. Over the internet. So we're going to get together that morning. And we are going to meditate together that morning. I will put more information out on the community page. So if you're not a subscriber already, please do so. Also, guys, I have noticed YouTube just did something with updating the bells. They may have taken away some of your subscriptions. Please check to make sure you are subscribed to my channel. And please make sure that your bell notifications are indeed chosen. Now, uh, before I let you all go, 
please don't forget I've got aura readings for 30 that an aura reading special on my website for $30. <coughs> um, I'm also going to put up a new subscriber and a full moon a full moon probably some sort of a group read or something group or session or something uh, if you guys wish to <coughs> if you guys wish to um, get an or reading go to my website and and schedule it um, <coughs> if you guys wish to just get a reading reading schedule it we're gonna do something I'm gonna post up tomorrow um, where you guys, we can all either get together or something like that. We've got to, the, I feel like there's a, a lot of people that need some energies cleared out or they just simply need to know what they need to work on and where they can get the most bang for their buck in energy healing and meditation work. So it's really imperative that um, I bring that to you guys, okay? All right, I'm going to get on out of here. <clears throat> it's 10 o'clock here, and I really got to get to bed. I really do. Okay. Um, I got to get to bed. So you guys, if you want to work with me individually, I'm going to be home all weekend this weekend. I will make time. So uh, reach out to me and let's work together, okay? You can email me at admin at heartofinspiration.net or find me on in, uh, www.heartofinspiration.net. All right, guys, I'm out. I'm going to let y'all go. I will see you all probably tomorrow, maybe not till Friday, but we are going to do specific readings uh, about, uh, actually I'm going to teach tomorrow night again about manifestation using this full moon energy for manifestation of what we should be using it for. That's what I'm going to teach on tomorrow night. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to just make it uh, unlisted TJ so you can watch the whole thing. All right. Peace, love, blessings, and joy be unto you today, tomorrow. And for all eternity, thank you for joining me, everybody. Thank you. Love you. Namaste. Bye-bye.